Well, I'm joined now by John Caballo from the African Union and Joseph Dungu from FIND. Gentlemen, welcome. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, sleeping sickness and, and why is it such a major problem for African communities? Well, trypanosomiasis, as we call it, is a, a severe, horrific disease of man and livestock, which is uh, caused by a blood parasite called trypanosome, and it is transmitted by a, a blood-feeding insect called the tetra. It occurs only in Africa and nowhere else in the world where it affects 36 countries uh, where it uh, causes death, debility and uh, diminished productivity. John, how serious an issue is it? It's a very serious disease. In fact, of all the factors, uh, that the problem that Africa has, I've been thinking that there's nothing that has shaped the ecology, the history, the socioeconomics of the continent as much as the Masses has. So John, what are we actually doing about it? Well, uh, a decision was made at the highest level by the African Health of State and Government after reviewing the effects of this disease on the continent. Don't forget, as I said, it affects 36 countries and uh, it causes the loss of $4.5 billion every year. We lose 35 million cows, 3 million cows, sorry, 3 million cows every year and about uh, 50,000 people every year to the disease. But Joseph, it's not an easy disease to diagnose and test for, is it? So what are you doing about that? I'm happy you appreciate it's not an easy disease to, to diagnose. And it is both for the human and the livestock disease. They do not have any characteristic clinical signs that can be used to identify an individual as a patient or an animal that requires treatment. So what has been happening in the livestock sector is that farmers tend to treat animals for this disease, which is called Nagana, yet maybe those animals are not sick of that disease. Sometimes they tend to over-treat and therefore there is drug resistance so that we have parasites there that cannot be treated and that increases losses. On the human side, the drugs that are used to treat this disease, as John said, are toxic. And when the disease advances to a certain point, it gets into the brain, and once it gets into the brain, certain drugs cannot be used to cure it. If we find that somebody has a brain disease, we treat them with this drug that is potentially dangerous to the individual, and they keep coming back every six months for a lumbar puncture to determine whether they have been cured. Now, the biggest challenge, therefore, has been to develop tests for both the human and the livestock disease that are simple enough and cheap and can be applied in the rural remote areas where this disease occurs, most preferably without any instruments because in those areas you do not have electricity and you need to make a diagnosis. So we have been working with the WHO and various partners in academia and in industry to search for such uh, technologies. And we have been making quite a bit of progress. As we search for those technologies, we also work with the African Union on an advocacy program, educating communities that the disease, if detected early, can be treated in a curative manner. Gentlemen, there's so much going on. It's such a major issue, but you've got so many great initiatives. Why can't we just sort this out? The most effective way of coping with this disease is actually to eradicate the test fly vector. And, and a lot of work has now started in the, in the African continent. As we speak, two countries are actually test free already. This is Botswana and Namibia. We have seen over the last decade that it is possible with concerted effort, with political support that is coming from the African government, from the international community, it is possible to develop better, sharper tools and to accelerate the process of elimination of this disease. Gentlemen, it's been a real pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today on Global Health TV.